Hello and welcome to Strelkomania. In this video, I wanted to share the life hack I uncovered for easily unclogging your X1C hot end when literally no other trick works. And in my desperate times of printing PA6CF and having crazy clogs, I turned to my trusty power tool. And boy, does this work. So I'll show you how you can easily unclog a heat creep clogged hot end using a perfectly sized drill bit as well as a skinny Allen wrench and that acupuncture needle. So we can remove the cover. This is the extruder I want to unclog. So I'll get my allen key and undo these two black screws. So I just took off these two bolts so that I can undo the hot end just like this. So there's a black clip right here that we want to take these wires out of gently just so that we have more range of motion with the hot end when we're heating it up. This wire up here is for this heatsink fan. Then we have these two wires up here, which are for the ceramic heater cartridge on the side of the hot end. And then finally, these two wires underneath the fan are for the thermocouple that's right on the side of the hot end measures the temperature of the hot end. For the sake of this video, I am going to unplug this fan so that the audio is a little bit better. When you unplug things, try your best to pull directly from the connector and not on these wires, which could damage the whole thing. So next, what I want to do is heat up the hot end. So I'll go to the temperature axis controls and then here at hot end, just increase the temp to 300 degrees Celsius. When I print PA6CF, my hot end is at about 270 degrees. I just max out the hot end temp so I know the material is heating up fully. Now that my hot end has reached the temperature, I'm going to hold on to the heat sink carefully and basically use my drill to drill into this clogged area. So I'm wearing some heat resistant gloves. If you don't have a pair of these or don't trust them, you can grab hold of the hot end up here with a set of pliers or hold on to the fan as well. Use my drill with a 5 64ths bit. Make a indentation into the material about a centimeter deep and then reverse the drill. And I'm going to push the rest of the filament out using the skinny allen key. And that's my foolproof way of unclogging my heat creep clogged hot end on the X1C. This is what I do when any other method doesn't work. If you want to make sure your nozzle is cleaned as well, you can use those provided acupuncture needle tools in the printer kit. Mine is quite a bit bent because I definitely got angry at my printer trying to unclog it until I figured out this life hack. Nice. So just like that, my hot end is unclogged. What I can do is just let this cool back to room temperature and reinstall it, reinstall the cover as well, and I am good to get printing again. So I know that a lot of the clogging I was experiencing while printing PA6 was because of heat creep. This is a high temperature material in an enclosed chamber. If you don't have the proper cooling for your hot end, what can often happen is heat creep where your filament starts melting too soon in the hot end, which could cause clogging. At least that is my best guess for the kind of clogging I was experiencing because after a few slicer changes that did go away. That is also why I think this trick works so well. So if we consider this X1C hot end, if I'm talking about a heat creep clog, basically that means I have filament clogged from the nozzle all the way up to the top of this heat sink where the filament enters and I have some melted filament here. When I heat up my hot end where the ceramic cartridge is, the main heat source is in this area and it creeps upwards. If I max out the temperature, most of my melt pool area is in this section. So when I'm clogged all the way up here, I'm not reaching the required temperatures to fully melt this material up here to be able to unclog it by doing a cold pull or using the normal Allen key trick. 
So by using the drill to kind of drill away some of this material up here in this area, I'm taking away a lot of the filament. So now there's less that needs to be melted using the residual heat from this area. So it's a lot easier to unclog. I feel like that's pretty much logic. I have less material that I'm now trying to melt with the same temperature. So it's a lot easier for me to melt and push it through. Definitely be mindful when you're attempting to use this trick to unclog a hot end. And what I mean by that, try the other simpler methods for unclogging if it doesn't work or you know it's a heat creep full hot end clog you can use this trick also note that different printers have different hot end constructions so for the case of the x1c the stock hot end from bamboo lab is one solid piece cartridge and the thermocouple come off obviously but the core the nozzle and this heat sink area they're all one piece they do not come apart then if you buy a knockoff non bamboo lab hot end replacement the nozzle is actually removable, like a normal ender, and this core piece is actually removable as well. It's held onto the heatsink with two set screws, so keep that in mind. And then, like, if I'm talking totally different hot end construction. There's also the typical full metal hot end from E3D where this is what the heat sink looks like. There's a stainless steel or copper heater block with the heat brake screwed in and the nozzle. Unfortunately, the only example I have to show you is the one I replaced off of my Prusa after literally getting a whole print worth of material stuck on the hot end. I'll put a picture up. But why I'm emphasizing on hot end construction is keep that in mind when you are drilling into your hot end. You don't want to drill too far to the point where you're damaging the hardware inside. Last thing you want to have metal shavings inside of your hot end, extruding out of your nozzle, it'll just ruin the system further. So what I noticed is you don't need to drill that far deep into the hot end at maximum a centimeter into the material to really dislodge it and allow for that hot end to really unclog. As you saw in my demonstration, I can tell when I've drilled far enough because the material just starts to ooze out. Some of the unexpected but quite useful life hacks you tend to uncover in extremely desperate times. That's it. I have been using a properly sized drill bit and my Milwaukee screwdriver to help me unclog every time I've suffered a PA6 CF clog, which by the way, since modifying my slicer settings, I've been having little to no clogs. So there's that. I don't typically print the high temperature engineering or fiber filled materials on my X1C. So on that front, I'm definitely still learning. I have been playing a bit with PA6 CF to print tensile samples with the goal of comparing that material strength to the the equivalent on the Mark Forge system. So with that, I have been experimenting with drying my filament as well as playing with my slicer settings. All of what I've learned so far, I have documented in my last video if you wanna check it out. And if you have any improved tips and tricks that I haven't mentioned in that video, please feel free to post them in the comments. We're all learning here.